history. Gola Konda, which means Shepherd's Hill in Telugu, inspired the name Golconda. Next to it was a small village settlement named Mangalavaram. Adjacent to it was a huge mountain on which lies Golconda. Constructed in the medieval period, this is one of the strongest forts of the Deccan and it played a pivotal role in shaping the politics of the region. In the 12th century, present-day Telangana used to be known as Teling. dynasty. Back then, Golconda was under the reign of these Kakadiya kings. Kakatiyas were the indigenous Hindu rulers and were very powerful in that era. Their fame spread across many countries and started attracting foreign invaders. In these circumstances, Kakatiya king Pratap Rudra took a bold decision to defend his kingdom. I, Kakatiya king Pratap Rudra, hereby decree the further fortification of Golconda Fort. After fortification, this fort will undoubtedly keep us safe from attacks on the Devagiri site, empowering us to fend off our enemies. Kakatiya rulers fought with great bravery and valor for many decades to defend Warangal and Golconda. At the end of the Kakatiya kingdom, brave native rulers like Musanuri Pralyanayak fought courageously and drove the invaders from his kingdom. Bahman Shah of 
viceroy of the Delhi Sultanate laid the foundation of the Bahamani Sultanate in the Deccan. Bahman Shah marched towards Golconda with a dream of conquering Varangal. But he was confronted by Musanuri Kapaya Nayak, successor Varangal ruler Pralya Nayak. Fighting with great valor and bravery, he drove away the invaders from Golconda. And once again, took possession of the fort. Two decades had passed. Rechirla Padmanayak King Annapota Nayak killed Musanuri Kapaya Nayak with the help of the Bahamani army. After this, Bahamani King Muhammad Shah annexed Warangal along with Golconda. Thus, the dominance of the Hindu rulers in Golconda and Varangal was ended. As history, I saw the churnings of a remarkable change at this point in time. The 14th Bahamani King Muhammad Shah's royal court is giving a warm welcome to Kuli Qutub Shah from the Persian city of Hamdan. Kuli Qutub Shah becomes a subedar, an important military officer of the Bahamani kingdom. Impressed by his working style and abilities, he is made Qutubul Mulk or governor of Telangana. Within seven years, the estate of Golconda is handed over to him. Golconda etches a new signature on the pages of time. Bahamani rule ends. Kuli Qutub Shah proclaims himself the Sultan of Golconda. Kuli Qutub Shah, declare myself the Sultan of Subai Telangana. This Sultanate will henceforth be known as Qutub Shahi Sultanate. Kilai Golconda will be our capital. With Sultan Kuli Qutub al Mulk, the foundation of the Qutub Shahi Sultanate was laid in Telangana. Sultan Quli made Golconda his capital, beautified the fort, and named it Muhammad Tagar. Qutub Shahi Sultans constructed many palaces, gardens, masjids, and many buildings for public use inside the fort in a properly planned way. Spread over a radius of seven kilometers, the fort has eight gates. Ahead of the entrance gate, Bala Hisar, is the Divane Khas and the court. Beyond that lies the Sultan's residence and the Queen's palace. Separate from this cluster lies the Mahakali temple, where even now, the popular Bonaru Jatra is organized with great fanfare every year. After Sultan Kuli, his third son,